Let's cut to the chase. A Nuzlocke is a Pokemon run with self-imposed rules. The conditions I've set are the following. If the Pokemon faints, they are dead for good. You can only capture the first Pokemon you encounter per route, and if that Pokemon faints, you can't catch another as a replacement. You must name every Pokemon you capture, and duplicates do not allow for another recapture. I did this run in Pokemon Silver because I like the way Lugia Bird smells. So our journey starts in New Bark Town, where we see some creep getting a little peek on the old Pokemon lab. Woo! Pokemon. Uh, so this is the famous Elm Pokemon lab. What are you staring at? I'll kill you! We go into the laboratory and Professor Elm has a request from us. He mentions a fellow on Reddit called Mr. Pokemon who claims to have the nuclear missile codes. Oh, uh, and something called a Pokedex. He wants us to validate this information via the traditional Australian method. Beat the living piss out of him. He gives us a Pokemon to assist us in the bloodshed. I name her Sweet Pea, and I love her. We hadn't received any Pokeballs at this point. The Nuzlocke has still technically started, so if Sweet Pea faints, I lose. However, the capture rule doesn't begin until I obtain Pokeballs. My luck, my rules. If you disagree, you're a dork and smell bad. On our way to the lab, I let Sweet Darling Sweet Pea vent its pent up frustrations via excessive violence upon smaller, more defenseless animals. Look at that gun! That's my gun. We later arrived at the Redditor's basement. We delivered the Smackdown promised earlier until he admitted that he sold the nuclear missile codes for a quick buck. Oh, and we also obtained that Pokedex he mentioned. On our way back from our, uh, business meeting, we encountered the same unnamed poo head who pushed us earlier and made me lose my milk money. We engage in combat and I murder his Pokemon. Shame, he seemed really nice. Unlike his trainer, who we called Olives. Cause Olives are gross. Don't at me. I don't give a shit. If you like them, you're not a real person. One identity crisis later, we are handed some Pokeballs and our Nuzlocke has officially begun. I was unintentionally playing at night. In fact, I'd completely forgotten that the older Pokemon games even had a time of day catch system. So when we encountered a Hoot Hoot as our first Pokemon, I was quite surprised. Oh yeah, it's night time. That's surprising. See? So we caught the Hoot Hoot and named it Pop-Tart. Your gaze is rather intense there. Oh, I see now. Everything is so clear! Moving past Cherry Grove City and onto Route 30, I encountered another Hoot Hoot. Needless to say, I was much less surprised this time. Alright, what did we get? A Hoot Hoot. It's not as surprising the second time. See? I named it Pop Tart 2. After some grinding, we made it to Violet Gym, where the gym leader Falconer awaited us. Honestly, not much to say. He likes birds and I enjoy killing things that people like. So alongside my truly flawless team, we kicked the living dirt out of his bird friends. I took his badge, and his dignity. Smell you later, schmuck. After a few beers in the Pokemon Center, we were approached by some guy offering us an egg. We took it and decided to contemplate what meal we would have with it before it burst. I took a quick look at Route 32 to see if there was anything worthwhile, but honestly it was just some ancient temple which had unknown in them, so I hadn't bothered exploring too far. However, I did see a patch of grass, which means a new party member. HOLY FUCK IT'S WHOOPER! OH MY GOD! YES! Needless to say, I'm a Whooper fan. Quagsire is quite a Pokemon, so in this Nuzlocke it'd be really helpful. After a small cry and non-consensual violence, I made it to a small cave. I was excited because usually people would see a Zubat and box it straight away. However, in a Nuzlocke, having them early on is an absolute blessing. Uh, but instead I got a Rattatat. I named him Jesus. Soon after, Sweet Pea defeated a trainer's Onyx and evolved into Croconaw. Things were looking pretty good. After leaving the cave, I encountered another Rattatat. Why? And gave it a fitting name. <laughs> we made it to Azalea Town, but the gym leader isn't taking any battles due to Team Rocket kidnapping Slowpokes and removing their tails for, I guess, money? So I gather information from some guy named Kurt who makes me an offer I simply can't refuse. Nicola, you want me to make some balls? I'm not falling for that one! No thank you, I refuse. Hearing about the evil plot Team Rocket had whipped up, I rushed into the town well to find the missing Slowpokes. We beat the everlasting shit out of the Team Rocket members before they even had a chance to use their Pokemon. I've been impaled. I also realized quite quickly that technically this cave is a new route. I secure us a Zubat. I name a Coco. We find the Slowpokes. Well, we think they're the Slowpokes. Ugh. We return to town after saving those things. And I make a few adjustments to my party before taking on Bug Gym Leader Bugsy. The battle was pretty simple. Popped out a Bluteray Metapon Kakuna with excessive use of pecking. And finally Bugsy brings out Scyther. Muchas gracias. Scyther almost destroys Pop-Tart with a priority move, so I switch him out with Sweet Pea. The fight is technically won at this point. However, I'd completely forgotten what the move Fury Cutter did. I take the bunch of damage, not thinking much of it. It deals more damage the more the move hits. Needless to say, I was incredibly lucky. Ah! Sweet Pea, if I lose you, I'll have nothing left. Just these guys. 
No offense, fellas. Yeah, no, no, I totally get Yeah, it. that's cool. I'm an egg. So we receive the gym badge with plenty of health despair and make our exit towards Golden Rod City until Dickhead Olives appears again and challenges me to a fight. CP hand was gassy with that trouble. However, it's the Bailey that gives us a run for our money. I send Pop Tart out and he's doing damage. However, he is consistently outstead. He takes lots of damage, but alas, he has one turn left before his demise. So, in an act of heroism, Pop Tart 2 switches into battle. Pop Tart 2 takes the first Razor Leaf with only 2 HP to spare. He uses what's left of his shortly lived life to allow Pop Tart the chance to heal. With one more Razor Leaf, Pop Tart 2 falls. Thank you, Pop Tart 2. I'll never forget this, buddy. And Pop Tart takes out Bayleaf. Pop Tart 2 was the first to fall, and weirdly enough, it upset me. He was never used in fights, but he will be missed. So moving along, we make it to Elix Forest and our encounter is a Paris. Honestly, I'm very happy with this encounter, as Paris Sect is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. He has some insane attack damage when he's fully leveled up and just look at those eyes! So full of wonder, I caught her and named her France. I know I'm hilarious. Please subscribe, I have depression. Shortly after the egg hatches and Togepi comes out. Glad we didn't boil this one in the end. I named her Pip Pip because of reasons unclear. Outside the forest, our first encounter on Route 34 is another Rattatat. I'm going to kill myself! This wasn't exactly going as according to plan as one would have hoped. In fact, things got a little strange, especially because... Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, what? So Jesus was killed by a critical hit, but luckily this was our first encounter on this route. So I mean, I named it Jesus. You didn't see anything. I left fuck me in the daycare center and spoiler alert, I forget I leave him there. I'm sure he's fine. We may get a go to Rod City, but I don't think we are cut out for Whitney just yet. A mill tank is said to be a common Nuzlocke killer, and this being my first, I want to make sure I'm more than prepared for it. After some short training, Pop Tart evolved into Noctowl, and I also encountered an NPC in the station above who had a request of me. He gave us a Pokemon with mail attached to it for his buddy on Route 31. So we temporarily have a Spearow named Kenya for now. Awesome. We enter the gym and everything is going pretty damn smoothly. Enemy soldiers are being gunned to death without much problem. And at last, finally, we make it to Whitney. Honestly, I was more than confident in this matchup. Not only did I have a full party, but Sweepy was even a few levels stronger than Miltank. We knocked out Clefairy without much trouble and there it was. The infamous Miltank. You are alone, child. Despite being up a few levels, this thing would not go down without a fight. It became a bit of a slugfest between Sweet Pea and Miltech until... Oh, come on, Sweet Pea, endure it! Oh my god, it's a crit! Ah! Oh, I'm gonna shit myself! I am the end. And I have come for you. Things were not looking great. I went into this with such confidence, but that quickly fled as I had realized that regardless of level, Miltank hits hard and fast. I needed to switch Sweet Pea out to heal her up and finish Miltank off. You are strong. She's the only one who can handle two rollouts back to back, which meant someone had to be used as a scapegoat. It's the third gym and I'm picking a sacrifice! Ah! So I grabbed out Kenya and thanks to that I was able to heal Sweepy again. Fall. We obtained the badge, but at the cost of our newest and youngest companion. I was pretty devastated. Kenya didn't even belong to me. I just killed some random guy's Pokemon! Wait, can I even release this thing? Holy- <laughs> With the mail and everything! We made it to Route 35, where we encountered an Adorian, which is a brilliant mon to have late game. Nido King is one of the best late game Pokemon to have, and I was confident in its coverage of moves. This boy was made to punch. We caught him and I named him Frappe. Very soon after, we beat up a bunch of child hoot hoots and evolved Nidorian into Nidorino. One thing to mention, in order to obtain Nido King, I needed a Moonstone. And from memory, the only way to get one in this game is relying on your mother to hopefully buy one with the money you saved up. So I gave her all my credit card details and left the job to her. Let's hope this doesn't backfire. After that life-changing decision, I decided to grind against some trainers, and we encountered a psychic fella who looked at me funny, so I thought I'd give him the old smackdown. That was until... Wait, what? That wasn't even a crit! I'm not even weak to psychic! What? What? So Jesus had died again. Fate had really decided to not allow me the little purple rat. It's upsetting because he was here since the beginning. Yes, he was here since the beginning. He was totally here. We return back to Golden Rod City in search of the cut TM to get past an annoying pseudo Wudo blocking our path. But I recall a very special place inside the city. The casino, baby! We're gonna be rich! The thing about the casino is that it also has Rutini for sale. 
who is a pseudo legendary once fully evolved, and he would help us demolish this run. Not only that, but if we consider Town's roots, I haven't received a single Pokemon on this route yet. However, we needed coins, so I started gambling. And gambling. And gambling. After a long while, I decided if these machines were going to con me out of my coins, it's time for a little bit of payback. I cheated. I cheated. I slowed down the emulator, and alas, it still did nothing. Come on, nice and easy. Yes, stay, stay. Why? No! I gave up on my honorable tactic and decided to settle for the evening town instead. I named him Pumpkin Paul, and I would kill everyone and myself for him. Soon we arrived at Emu City. We beat the living tits out of some innocent dancers with elemental dogs, and soon Sweepy evolved into Fro Alligator. We were making damn good progress at this point. We took on the Mystic Seer Gym to defeat oh, their gym leader, oh Morty. God. He was honestly oh a bit God. of a pushover. Sweepy and France swept his entire team, and the gym badge was ours. Wubba lub dub dub, you piece of shit. We moved on to Route 38, where we encountered a far-fetched. Not a great mon in this game, but I caught him anyway. I caught him anyway. Anyway. Any. Ah. Anyway! In the box with you, budget Hatsune Miku! On Route 39, I encountered Eradicate and I named it Beep! Emphasis on the E! We made it to Olivine City and immediately encountered Olives again. Supposedly taking care of some sick Pokemon in the White House. Hmm, <laughs> boo hoo, just let the sick Pokemon go. Yeah! Pokemon that can't battle are worthless, yeah! Why don't you train the lighthouse? Yeah! Wait, what? We climbed the tower and met up with Jasmine, who was taking care of a sick Ampharos. She asked us to go find some medicine for it from a doctor in Sienwood. So, across the water we go! We caught a tentacle. I called him Dr. Blub Blub. I diagnose you with cringe. And Paris evolved into Parasect. After a while, we made it to Sienwood City. We went inside a random person's house, and they gave us one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Shaka! Shuckle is a great Pokemon to have in this run. He's tanky and he's beautiful. I utilized Shuckle as a Pokemon to switch onto in order to heal others. I love him! We moved on to the fighting gym and despite Pop Tart being an actual godmon, we almost lost him to the first trainers in the gym. After some quick grinding, we took on Chuck and Pop Tart swept. Good shit, my precious and rather intense bird. We returned to Jasmine and gave Amphi the medicine they needed, and then Jasmine kind of just bounces and just ditches him. Jasmine's gym, however, made me quite nervous. We only had one fighting move on our team, and Sweepy had it. Not only that, the Pokemon she led with are Magnemites, who definitely have lightning moves on them. So I utilized Shaka as a means of healing up Sweepy, and we made it. Barely. We made it to Mahogany Town, but a strange phenomena has been occurring. The Lake of Rage in Mahogany Town, which inhabited various Magikarp, were being forced into evolution. Due to this, the gym was inactive, so we had some investigating to do. We headed towards the Lake of Rage and encountered a Flaffy. I was a little excited. Yes! I love Flaffy! I named it Artsy and was incredibly happy with it. We were lacking lightning in our team, and Flaffy is also one of my favorites in the entire Johto region. We make it to Lake of Rage and we capture the Red Yarados and call it Terra. What a cutie! We encounter Lance, who's like, go investigate the town and shit. <laughs> we do both! Oh, and find Team Rocket's secret base. Using Artsy and Sweepy, we are cleaning up. Goons are falling left, right, and center, and we're grinding quite well. However, luck truly runs out. We encounter a trainer who has a coughing, and well, turns out this dickhead scientist Ross is a cold-blooded killer. Coughing, you self-destruct. With that, I was not okay. I only had Artsy for a little while, but my god did I love her. Those 30 minutes we spent together were some of my happiest. We had sent their parents the life insurance money and then proceeded to kill various electrodes to stop the signal that's causing the Megacarp to evolve. We took on Price's gym and thanks to our intense bloodlust, Sweet Pea swept with an eye punch. Hurts to suck, old man! On our way to the next gym, I get a call from Mum. She says she's found a strange sock in my room. Oh, and she also bought some stuff using my money. And wouldn't you know it, the old hag pulls through. She buys us the moonstone we craved and with that, Frappe evolved into Nido King. On our way to Blackthorn City, we encounter a Poliwagon Jinx, or should I say, Blamed Axis and Matilda. <laughs> After being stuck for five years at the FIRST ice puzzle, we finally arrived at the final town of Blackthorn. The gym leader, however, is in training, and therefore inactive, which is just a plot device in order to make me go back to Goldenrod City and sort out some Team Rocket business happening there. So we fly back there, take out some goons, and we are told of the location of the Radio Town's director. Upon travelling underground to find him, we encounter a rival again. He may have a meganium, but we've got a friend. Into the stratosphere with thee. After saving the director, we are given the Silver Wing, which is a key item used to obtain Lugia, but that wonderful smelling burb can wait. We have one final gym to finish. When I first started the Nuzlocke, I was worried about Claire's gym. Dragon types were new to Pokemon at this stage, and the only things effective against them were Ice, Steel, and Dragon. The only Ice type I had was Jinx, and she was incredibly underleveled. So instead, I bought Ice Punch, gave that to Sweepy, and my god, we swept again! 
Is this how Cynthia feels? Being that Tsundere, that Claire is, she refused to acknowledge me worthy of the badge unless I found a secret item in the Dragon Dungeon. Upon entry, I was quite excited because Dratinis can be found here. So I named it how I felt and grabbed a stupid item and took a stupid badge. Stupid, stupid, stupid! From there we headed towards the Elite Four. On the way we encountered a Dom fan. We called Mumbo and encountered Olives again. This time we kicked the shit out of him. Well, kind of. His Meganium just gave up. So don't blame him. Been through a lot. Honestly, it was a great day. With that, we finally made it. The Elite Four. I remember feeling quite nervous. Despite this Nuzlocke being one of the more easier ones, this was my first time. And honestly, I'm quite garbage at Pokemon if that wasn't apparent. Took a deep breath and left because I wanted to catch the big flying burb. After making it to the Whirlpool Islands and wandering for two hours aimlessly because I didn't have flash and I was out of escape ropes, I finally made it. The legendary bird and ruler of the elemental trio, Lugia. A legendary Pokemon. Catching this thing would help me sweep the Elite Four. Don't worry, Sweet Pea, we can do this! Hit him with Surf! His health isn't low enough to catch yet. Alright, one more Surf, Sweet Pea! I got a high roll Surf. I also forgot I had a Master Ball. I hate myself. Anyway, back to Elite Four. My team was looking alright level-wise, but coverage I was very nervous. Nevertheless, this was it. Either we come out as winners or we die trying. The first Elite Four was Will. His team was composed of pure psychic types. <gasps> they served no trouble though thanks to France and Sweet Pea slashing, as well as Pongan Pulse's Shadow Bell every now and then. And then Pop-Tart just spam fly to take out the Executor. Shit's easy when you know how. You will never be on my level. Go on, Michael. Thanks, Editor. That was weird. The second Elite Four was Koga. He was. Incredibly easy. Pop Tart handled Louis' spider using Fly and Frappe Fire punched his way through Fortress and Venomoth, alongside Sweet Pea, who ice punched Mark and Crobat, until Koga himself exploded in inferiority. Man, a lot of explosions in this video. The third Elite Four was Brunei, the Kicking King. I relied on Pop Tart for the most part by spamming confusion and play as much as possible, however, Bruno's team was tough. Pop Tart again didn't have much health nor physical defense, so switches were inevitable. I tried to use Sweepy to help keep the team afloat, but she was also getting the shit kicked out of her. I needed to heal up, but I also needed to switch. My champ's cross chomp was wearing us down, and considering how underleveled we were, only Sweepy really stood a chance here. But Sweepy would also die in two hits without a critical. I didn't want to take risks. I needed her against the champion, and she was the only one carrying an ice move on her. With a heavy heart, I sent out Shucky. Chucky has insane defense, but even with it, I knew what would come out of this here. I healed CP and... Chucky was killed. This one really hurt. Chucky died doing what he was born to do. Be the switch we needed. And he was. After that, Sleepy got even with Bruno's Machamp, and the third of the Elite Four was down. Thank you, Chucky. This runs for you, buddy. The final Elite Four was Karen. She specialized in dark types. This fire was honestly much easier. Sweet Pea took out her Umbreon with an eye punch and Pop Tart pegged Bioplume to Oblivion. It was quite gruesome, I dare say. Frappe learned Thunder Punch, so McCrow was no issue. Overall, Karen was the big dumb and I am the mega intelligent. But at last, the final boss lands. Honestly, I was very nervous. Sweet Pea was our only chance against this team but the levels weren't in our favor. She was the only one with an ice move, which meant if we lost her, we could lose a Nuzlocke here and now. So we played it as safe as possible by starting with Nido King against Gyarados. Now, yes, it was a huge gamble as Nido King was in water, and you bet your biscuits that Gyarados has a water move. However, I needed to take risks to ensure Sweepy makes it through this with as much health as possible. She was gonna have to sweep everybody after all. Nido King uses Thunder Punch and Thankfully, it one hits. See? I had a plan. I know what I'm doing. Everything's fine. Gyarados basically has a four times weakness to thunder, so one thunder move would kill it instantly. Aerodactyl is sent out, so I switch to Sweet Pea. Aerodactyl uses Rock Slide, but luckily doesn't do too much damage. Sweet Pea then returns that overpriced gift with some change in the form of an Ice Punch. His Aerodactyl goes down without much trouble, and after a while, his two weaker Dragonites come out to play. The first Dragonite goes down without too much trouble, and a little after, so does the other. I was incredibly lucky that I was a few levels higher. One of those demons had thunder, and that would have very easily one-hit Sweet Pea. 
And let's not forget, if Sweet Pea goes down, this Nuzlocke is over. All that's left is the Charizard and his strongest Dragonite. Pop Tart Out speeds Charizard and lands the Hypnosis, allowing Frappe to Thunder Punch a hole right through his stomach. I quickly used France as a reserve to get health back on Sweepy, but France is killed by the strongest Dragonite who had Fire Blast. I completely forgot how drastic a change his moveset is in the final stage. I assumed it had Blizzard, which is why I took Frappe out, but alas, I was wrong. But my misplay, combined with France's grand sacrifice, gave us the opportunity we needed. Sweepy, in one final Ice Punch, was entrusted with the feelings of all those who had gotten us to this point. Thanks to a quick little held item, she asked the Dragonite before her and ended the battle. The Nuzlocke was beat. I was a little excited to say the least. <laughs> I'm so emotionally exhausted! Now that's the sound of a winner. We've officially become the champion of the Johto region. Thanks to the aid of all of our fallen companions, we finally made it here. It took a lot of time, and sacrifices were made. But I give thanks to you all for allowing me the chance to beat my first ever Nuzlocke run. Dead or alive, the beers are on me.